Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Today is the 26th of September 2024 and it's a Thursday. That's just one day to uh, the weekend. So we are glad that we survived to this moment and we thank God for every moment that we've had and hoping that today is going to be a very, very wonderful day for all of us. Uh, on the show this morning, we'll be looking at uh, uh, what security concerns we have in this country. Two million personnel are not adequate to uh, police the country. That is, uh, w according to Lagbaja, uh, he's talking about the number of security personnel that are in Nigeria. Uh, that the two million security personnel cannot adequately secure Nigeria. And then we also have a story that ASU is threatening strike over unmet agreements with the federal government. That will come also as a hot topic. Of course, we'll be looking at our top trending issues and then we will be looking also at the papers. We'll go to the press to see what made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies this morning. Once again, good morning and welcome. And let's take this short break. When we return, we'll be looking at our top trending issues. Stay with us. The first top trending issue here is that Olaya Mikadoso, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, has says recent multiple interest rate hikes has restored confidence in the Naira. Speaking at a press conference after the 20. 297th Monetary Policy Committee meeting in Abuja, Kadoso explained that the consecutive rate hikes have positively changed how people view the currency. Since the beginning of the year, the committee has raised the benchmark interest rate from 22.75% in February to 27.25% in September in a bid to curb inflation and stabilize the Naira. Kadoso emphasized that before the hikes, the exchange rate was spiraling and many Nigerians had lost confidence in the Naira. Now he says more people are willing to hold on to the Naira due to the steps taken by the central bank. He added that CBN has improved the flexibility and transparency of the foreign exchange market, clearing a $7 billion backlog and rebuilding trust in the financial system. However, the World Bank has warned that these hikes may not fully control inflation, and if the monetary tightening fails, it could threaten economic growth. The Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprises, CPPE, also cautioned that the latest hike could harm investment and growth in the economy. I like it when uh, people have confidence, people have faith in what they are doing. Uh, the CBN governor has said that it has restored confidence in the Naira. I'm not sure the confidence of the people of Nigeria is what he's talking about. But if that is the case, I don't know how much in touch he is in, uh, with uh, the reality on ground and what the people are saying about whatever is happening to the Naira. The Naira, as at this time, is uh, 670. 1,670 Naira to a dollar. Um, I don't know what it is this morning, but as at yesterday or the day before, that was how high the Naira was. And whether you, we like it or not, there is still an official market. There is still an unofficial market where people are buying. So there's, no, there's nothing like if you go to the bank, you'll get the same thing as you're getting in the black market. That's, what, that's the reality on ground. People would rather have dollars and save in dollars rather than uh, having the Naira. So I don't know the confidence he's talking about. Maybe we'll have to get to know that uh, on another day. But uh, the financial experts, and including the World Bank, are saying, are warning against these hikes all the time. Every time there is an MPC meeting, we can just see without even uh, thinking of the outcome that there will be a hike from 25 point something percent, now it's 27, uh, 22% is now 27% and more. And we're just... Uh, uh, hearing from the governor of the central bank that people have have now or the I confidence of the people have been restored in the naira i don't know who which people he's talking about not me maybe other financial experts that are not talking but as far as we know uh, a lot of these experts are saying that this is not a very good move to keep hiking the interest rate and whatever reasons they're giving i don't know how the mpc um who the MPC consults, whether the central bank is, 
is so all-knowing that uh, the, the opinions of other experts cannot be taken into consideration because the experts have continually cried that this hike in interest rates is killing businesses, is killing the economy and all that. And the CBN governor uh, doesn't seem to listen and is saying that it has, the confidence of the Naira has been restored. Let's see how the coming days will be. But for as long as the Naira is still above a thousand, uh, the dollar is still above a thousand Naira, um, I'm not sure there's anything to, uh, to shout Eureka about. We have not found a solution to our spiraling Naira. How much is it uh, before it is 2,000 Naira? So if it is 1,600, that means only 400 Naira, and then it will be 2,000 Naira. It rose to, uh, to eight, 1,800 Naira at some point, and everybody was like, okay, it's going to get to 2,000 and even beyond. And at that time, the pound was beyond uh, 2,000 Naira at some point in uh, between last year and this year, or within last year and this year. So um, if the... CBN governor is saying the Naira, uh, the Naira's confidence or the people's confidence in Naira has returned. Uh, we, are, we are yet to see some of us, the common men, the people, the laymen who do not know the economic terms and, and workings, are waiting to see how it will affect us, how people will, will begin to respect the Naira and say, okay, we too have uh, money that has value. Now to buy a loaf of bread, we know what it, it is. We know what, if we're buying anything from outside, we're importing anything from outside, how it's going to cost us and how unstable it is. In the morning, it could be high or low, and in the evening, it's a different uh, ball game altogether. And businesses in that kind of situation are not good enough. And even if businesses will survive because they will carry the cost to the people who are buying, what about those people who are buying, who, who cannot say, okay, because uh, the Naira has gone up, uh, I cannot go and buy anymore. If I need to buy Gary, I will still buy Gary. And the person who bought Gary at 50, uh, at, at 1,000 Naira, who hears that the dollar has gone up and he cannot buy the things that he needs that money to buy because they were imported, will have to hike the, the price of Gary. And so we will keep suffering those of us who do not have um, the kind of work and pay or uh, workshop, as, as they say it in, in the comedy world. Uh, where you work, that's where you eat. And then you, you're having pocket never dry. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for from the streets. Pocket never dry. That, is, that means you have a, a business and uh, the steady income, no matter how small, coming in. So we'll, we'll keep suffering. Uh, if you're a salary earner and the salary is not going up, and then uh, the prices of things are going up, because of one thing or the other, then you'll keep suffering. And Nigerians, um, they're getting close to that point where there is a wall. And if Nigerians get to that point, we don't know how far they can go, how much they can fight back, and, all, and what will happen at that point. So the CBN governor should do something better, something that will, will show us that it is really working. The policies that they're coming up with are really working. Otherwise, no matter the the big words they're using, no matter how much our external reserves grow, how much whatever grows, so long as it's not reflecting on the lives of the people, nobody will be happy. Okay, the next um, uh, top trending issue is alleged money laundering. Yahya Bello drags EFCC to Supreme Court. The immediate past governor of Kogi State, Yahya Bello, has dragged the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to the Supreme Court uh, for declaring... Uh, him wanted. The anti-graft agency filed a 19-count charge against him over his alleged complicity in money laundering to the tune of 80.2 billion naira while in office. He was billed to appear before the Federal High Court in Abuja on Wednesday for his arraignment. However, during the court session, Bello's legal team, led by A.M. Adoyi, informed Justice Emeka Nwite that they had filed an appeal with the Supreme Court on September 23, seeking to overturn the arrest warrant issued against their client on April 17. Adoyi urged the trial court to suspend the planned arraignment pending the outcome of the appeal before the Supreme Court. In response, EFCC counsel Kemi Pinero uh, urged the court to recommend sanctions against Bello's lawyer accusing him of aiding his client in uh, undermining the judiciary's integrity. Pinero pointed out that Bello's defense team was present when the court ruled it would no longer entertain any applications from the defendant until he made himself available for trial. 
Furthermore, he noted that rather than attend his trial, the former governor claimed to have visited the EFCC office. After hearing both sides, Justice Mwite adjourned the matter until October 30 for a ruling. <laughs> this is Niger. I like, the, I like whatever happens in Nigeria. This is someone who is wanted uh, by the law, and he's been wanted for a very, very long time. First off, uh, it's being said that he's been protected by a sitting governor just because he has immunity. And that brings to the question whether we need to look at our immunity clause, immunity law that gives uh, the governors uh, that immunity so that they cannot be prosecuted and all that. And I was asking the question the other day, uh, does it mean that if the governor has immunity, Everything and everyone in the government house has immunity as well. Even the government house itself is immune to any, any probe or anything. And the, quest, the, the answers from the experts was that they, it is the person who has immunity so that he can concentrate to do whatever he needs to do, but not the government house and every, everybody inside. So the question is, if he's protecting Yaya Bello, how is it that he cannot arrest him? And the other answer was that, okay, he has to give consent if someone is under his roof. And it doesn't make any sense to a lot of us. How can someone who is wanted all these years will just do their bracadabra and say he went to the EFCC office, whether he did go or not, and the circumstances surrounding his going and how he went is another issue entirely. But if he did go, uh, we heard a few days later, uh, women in Kogi State came out to, to say that he's being witch-hunted, he's being uh, persecuted, uh, he's innocent, and all that. And I'm just asking myself, if someone is innocent, he's being uh, witch-hunted, everybody in the media is interested in this case. Why not just go present yourself and everybody will, will just be looking at what the judiciary will do. The evidences should exonerate you or implicate you. So if you're innocent, why are you running? How is it possible that a case that has not been tried and, you know, exhausted, all the, uh, every, every avenue is exhausted at, at the lower courts, will be taken to a Supreme Court and they accept it? Is that how the law works? Maybe we'll look for a time to, to discuss how the law works. I didn't know until now that you can just walk from from your house to the Supreme Court and, and, and get an injunction to stop the lower court from, from prosecuting you. I thought maybe you would have to go to the lower courts and then if you, the judgment is not favorable to you, you move to um, a higher one until you get to the Supreme Court. I didn't know you can just move from your house to the Supreme Court, get an injunction or sue the people, the law that is trying to probe you for what they feel you had done while you were in office, 80.2 billion naira. It's not small money. We've seen other people, you know, I think 80 is a very good figure. We saw the accountant general um, stealing 80 billion and I think even more. We've seen what Mena did if to the pensions money. We've seen a lot of people and their cases are just uh, silent. We've not heard much about it. Maybe they are in jail now, I don't know. I don't know if that, that accountant general is in jail now. I don't know if uh, Mena uh, of the pension saga is in jail right now. Uh, it, but it seems to be very, very cold. Nobody hears about the people who, um, even some ex-governors who were put in prison at some point, we just saw that they, they left prison and we don't know why uh, that happened. People who have cases do not even answer. And then when the EFCC is closing down or closing in on a lot of high profile people, the next thing we will hear is that even the EFCC chairman is so corrupt and he's sacked. Someone else comes, he, he breathes fire and brimstone and after some time he is sacked. And then that case dies like that. Maybe that's what will happen to Yaya Bello. I'm shocked that the women came out to protest for him and not against him. And I'm shocked that he was able to just walk to the Supreme Court and got a letter to stop him from being prosecuted or being arrested in the first place for someone who says he is innocent. Well, immunity continues. I don't know, maybe after second tenure of the, the present governor, another governor will come that is also loyal to their cause, whatever that cause might be, and they keep on filing people in government house that should face trial.
like the former, former president said, Lucia Gomez Basenjo, so many politicians should have been behind bars. But unfortunately, they are not behind bars. The bars that they are behind are the bar that is telling us that uh, this is what you should do as Nigerians and not us. Uh, you should be a good person and not us. You should, be, you should uh, stay away from corruption and not us. You should tighten your belt and not us. And that is what they are telling us. So they have raised the bar. That's the bar that they are behind. And uh, we cannot see them. We cannot touch them. They are untouchable. Well, yeah, yeah, Bello. Congratulations for getting your injunctions uh, against their warrant of arrest. Now, the final top trending issue is Lagos residents protest electricity tariff hike, demand to stay on band B. <laughs> okay, I won't walk, see walk. That's what they say. This is band A <coughs> that people are in. Uh, you have electricity and you cannot pay for the electricity. So you, you are, it's good as, as good as not having electricity. It's like having a new pair of shoes that, uh, that are not your size. You can't wear them. It's big, either they are too big or they are too small. They don't fit. Uh, so you cannot say you have shoes just because you put them inside your box. Uh, they are there. Every morning you can go and look at them, but you cannot use them. That's how it is right now. You own a car, you cannot drive it because you can't fuel it. So you are not a car owner. You are trekking like the rest of us. You are just a car owner by name. And that doesn't count as being a car owner as far as I'm concerned. You have electricity, you cannot pay for it. So you put off your light, you put off your refrigerator and all other appliances because the tariff is so high that it could take your entire salary to just pay for electricity. You've not talked about buying fuel, you've not talked about buying food, you've not talked about paying rents that are crazy in Lagos. Um, Every small street will just put a gate in front of them and then they have become an estate and then you begin to pay crazy rents and that's what is happening in Lagos right now. So places that are not even supposed to be called estates as it were, once you can afford a gate, that's, uh, that's an estate right now, so you begin to pay uh, like you're living in the highest uh, area in Lagos State and it's very, very unfortunate. So people are now protesting, I beg, step us down. Uh, in strong display of dissatisfaction, some Lagos residents have staged a protest against the recent increase. That's what the, the papers say in electricity tariffs. Holding placards with bold inscriptions, the people were now protesting and asking the government or the power holding company or uh, whoever is in charge to step them down to band B. We were told that band A uh, will have constant electricity at least 20 hours a day or so or even if it's 18 hours. The reality on ground is that a lot of these places that are called Band A are not even having as much power as they are saying. And even when uh, it is not up to what they told them that they're going to be giving them, because I don't have, I'm not on Band A. In fact, I'm not on Band A, Band B, or Band anything. I'm on rubber band, <laughs> like some of us. So uh, you don't have a band at all, so there's no, no alphabet for you. So that asking them to step them down to band B, that they'd rather have uh, less electricity and pay less. Uh, some of the placards read, we reject outrageous tariffs and issue prepaid meters for free. The protesters voiced their frustration over the classification of their area under band A, which demands higher tariff. Okay, so... Uh, the residents called for a re-migration to Band B, citing concerns about the affordability of the new rates and inadequate service delivery. Okay. So another concern, apart from the fact that they're not having as much electricity as they should have, and that the one that they even have, the tariff is too high, is that they are also calling for uh, free meters to be given. And I don't know, it, it makes sense. You are coming to me, you're giving me electricity, and then you're collecting money, and then I will have to buy uh, that meter uh, to put in my house, then to pay you. Look at, look at the telecommunications, for instance. There are some, some telecommunication companies now that uh, you can buy their SIM card for as low as 100 naira, and then you still have some credit on the card, and then uh, you load that card uh, because they know that they are going to recoup, they are going to get back their money, so they are giving you next to nothing. But here, because of uh, maybe 
the monopoly, there is no competition, there it has, the power sector is still just one thing. It, it has not been given out to private investors as many as possible to, to also do what the telecommunications uh, companies are doing. Uh, we still have this. Uh, you can produce the power and they refuse to buy. Nobody will uh, say anything about it. So we'll perpetually be left in uh, 3,000 megawatts as a country of 20, 200 million uh, people. We will just be left with that. So you buy as a street or as a community. You donate your own money. You sweat. You buy a transformer. You install in your community. In fact, you, you invite the power holding company to come and install the transformer in your community. And once they switch it on, you begin to pay. They're not considering the fact that they didn't give it to you. You just begin to pay. It's just like taking your car to the road. And then somebody comes, jumps in. He's a driver. You cannot drive. Then he takes you to work every day. You begin to pay him for your car. Not like you, 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 he is your driver that you employed. Come, I don't want to drive, just come. He is a passenger. He comes because he can drive. He, he, he takes himself to the, to, the, to, the, to the office and takes you as well to the office, and then you pay him for driving your car. I don't know. That is even mild. I don't know the kind of example I'm going to give, but that's what the power holding company does. You buy your own meters. They charge you for it. Uh, you buy your own uh, transformer, they charge you for it. Uh, whether you are supposed to, <clears throat> whether, whether you are defaulting or not, sometimes they come to your house, they disconnect you, you go back to the company or you corner them somewhere and then you give them money. It's just a terrible, vicious circle. Something should be done about this. And I don't, I don't know, maybe Nigerians should just, uh, like we say, let's burn them a big and be thinking about solar energy. But when we have a national assembly, like the last national assembly, where someone stood up and said that as Nigerians, we should not be talking about electric cars, we should not be talking about solar cars, because we produce oil in our country. And that was a very shocking thing. And if you have such people in the national assembly, what do you expect? So we're praying that we get to that point where uh, policies will be for the people and not just to make money. Making money is a good thing, but if the people are not happy, what are you making the money for? Everybody wants to leave the country, so you want the country to just be empty so that you can uh, go into the oil wells and do what you want to do, or you, you want to be the only one driving on the road, you want to be the only one going to... I don't know what the people at the helm of affairs are thinking. Well, if you are doing something good, let us know about these things. And if you cannot do a thing, don't promise what you cannot do. We're still waiting for CNG buses. They are not coming. We're waiting for the 40,000 Naira rice. It's not coming. We are waiting for the free importation of uh, food items. That's not coming. We are waiting for uh, the um, uh, cash, um, what do they call it, um, cash uh, transfer. We're not seeing. Uh, salary award the, of the civil servants, we're not seeing. All the things that were promised, we're not seeing. Some of them were promised six months. And then after one month, it ended. Uh, that doesn't speak well for the government. So let us have confidence in whoever is leading us and let the policies be geared towards making the people happy. We don't want electricity if it is going to cut our throats and make us not to feed anymore. We don't even want to move from place to place if we cannot feed anymore. Feeding is fundamental. A roof over your head is fundamental. Uh, what you clothe yourself so that you won't be called a, a madman is fundamental. These are the three things. And then we find in Nigeria people who over the years have not been able to buy a new shirt or new trousers or a new dress or something new to wear because there's no extra money. You just, you just spend everything on food and transportation and then on your rent. It's, it's a crazy thing. It's a crazy thing. We do hope that our leaders will do something. And we've heard that the, the, the president will rejig his ministry or there will be a review. We hope that he will find out those people who are not performing. And by performing, I'm not saying those people who are not getting money to the coffers of the government. Those people who are not bringing up policies that uh, will make the people happy and applaud this government. If that is done and people sit up, we do hope that uh, Nigerians will smile. Fight corruption from top to bottom and from bottom to top. Uh, well, that's uh, much we can take on uh, top trending issues. We'll take another break. When we return, uh, we'll be looking at the press. Stay with us. <laughs>